let's talk a little bit about the casting of this um, project. I get emails all the time. People are wondering how they can attach talent to their screenplay. Um, do you know anything about the process? How did you guys get Daniel Radcliffe attached to the project? And you know, how much impact did that have on the funding of the film? Um, was that with the people that came in and funded it? Did they definitely want some name talent um, involved in this project? Was it before the the money or after the money? Yeah, good question. Um, well, I mean, I know they wanted to cast ambition ambitiously. I mean, originally it was a very small budget, you know, one point five, two million pounds. Um, so, you know, as this thing grew, they said, okay, well, this is going to be a bigger project, a very good one, and we want to do it well. Um, now, in terms of the cast, I was quite uh, strategic, perhaps. I, I needed someone who was inventive, uh, you know, big, big, you know, big name, but somebody who was inventive and somebody who took risky projects. I don't think this was necessarily a risky project in terms of being esoteric or being abstract, but for the first time director and blah, 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 I needed somebody who would take a punt. And I knew that Danny Radcliffe had sort of taken on very interesting projects, whether the subject matter or, you know, he'd done a, he'd done a film with BBC Two, which is a TV movie. Uh, you know, he played a dead body, he played a guy who, you know, with horns coming out of his head, you know. So I knew that um, although this was a more maybe straight project or a more commercial project, I thought he's the kind of guy that if I can get his interest, if you can see the, the value in it, he might go for it. So I was quite, quite strategic in making sure that although we had a big name, it was somebody who would be interested and somebody who would probably, you know, give us an answer quickly. And Dan was kind of top of the pile for that. Um, he just done a film yeah. called Imperium. So that was, again, a straight drama. So I knew that he wasn't just looking for, you know, off-war stuff. He was looking to do sort of, you know, strong thrillers. Um, so with all of that, you know, he, he was somebody who I, you know, was really interested in. Um, and uh, we all went to see Imperium and loved it and said, right, you know, that's it. We've got no, we've got no, no qualms. Um, so that was that, that strategy in terms of going for someone who was a big name, but who would be willing to consider an independent film like this. In terms of um, financing and funding, yeah, his name meant a lot, you know, because with pre-sales, um, you know, with me being a first-time director, um, the, the, pre-sale, the pre-sales, they need, they need something to hook the project on. Uh, to get distributors to um, uh, commit to, you know, giving you what they call a minimum guarantee, paying money um, to mm-hmm. have the exclusive right to sell your film before you've made it in Italy or Spain or Germany or whatever. They don't know what the film is. When, when they see Dan Rackham, they go, ah, okay, we can look at Dan Rackham's films that are sold, for example, in Italy or Spain and go, oh, they're very successful. Therefore, we're willing to mm-hmm. pay this much money uh, up front before you've made the film um, to be able to secure the right to sell the film once it's finished in Italy or whatever territory. Having a name gives those distributors something to peg um, the film to, and then you know, gives, you, know, you can start to put hard figures, hard you know, money, cash, that the distributors mm-hmm. are willing to pay in the rights to sell your film. So Dan you know, enabled that um, to happen yeah. in Cannes, and at American Film Market, and at EFM, and so on. How can, we, um, how can people see Escape from Pretoria? Do you know what the release schedule is going to be like? Yes, um, it'll be out in cinemas in the US uh, from 6th of March and in the UK from 6th of March. Now, it's also um, out you know, online, but obviously as a, you know, a good cinema filmmaker, I wanted to go and find the cinema and watch it there because I've spent a lot of time on the mix. I think the, the immersive quality of the mix is really part of the process. Mm-hmm. It, it is available um, for those you know, who maybe might not have a cinema close by. You know, it's available on pretty much every digital platform. But um, I'd re- you know, for cinephiles and people who are interested, I really you know, would encourage you to get the best experience by going to see it in a cinema. Thanks for checking out this clip from the Selling Your Screenplay podcast. If you'd like to hear the full interview, just go to sellingyourscreenplay.com slash podcast. Or to go directly to the episode, just use the link in the show notes. Thanks for watching.